Hey there, and welcome to the Hawkridge Systems Pro Tips for Technical Communications. Historically, inspection documentation has never been easy or quick to create. As time progresses, we're getting better at automating this process, and here are three pro tips for SOLIDWORKS inspection that will utilize existing data and get you one step closer to automation. Using the SOLIDWORKS inspection add-in to pull custom properties from the SOLIDWORKS model and drawing in order to automate some of the FAI first article inspection report. Modifying OCR, optical character recognition, fonts in order to automatically translate text, and modifying the FAI report template in order to pull custom data. For the first trick, let's take this SOLIDWORKS drawing and pull some custom properties into a new inspection report. To do this, go to the SOLIDWORKS inspection add-in and select new inspection project. Inspection comes loaded with quite a few templates to get you started. For this one, I'm going to select default. The next section allows you to specify what properties are pulled from SOLIDWORKS into inspection. When a property type is selected, the linked custom property window pops up. Select the custom property you want to associate with the inspection property, and the two will be linked together. This link will follow the inspection report to the standalone inspection program, also known as SOLIDWORKS Inspection for PDF. Once all general properties have been linked, custom inspection properties can be defined. There is a pull down list to choose from, and the value can be linked to any custom property. Both the property type and value can be manually typed in if it's not in the list. For characteristic info, you can choose which order the balloons are placed on the drawing and the lot size. Clicking the Next button at the top of the tab will take you to the next section, which will allow you to define which type of dimension to include in the report, and if you want to include notes and GDT definitions. The last section is for defining the unit of measure and tolerances. If the tolerance is defined on the dimension annotation, it takes precedence. If not, we can define that by specifying tolerances based on the decimal point. Click the check mark at the upper left of the tab and the initial inspection project will be created. This is a semi-automated way of capturing the intelligent information from SOLIDWORKS to start the inspection project. From here, click on the Export to SOLIDWORKS Inspection Project located in the Inspection tab on the Command Manager. This will export the inspection project so it can be then opened in the standalone inspection software. This brings us from the SOLIDWORKS inspection add-on to the standalone PDF software and to number two on the trick list. Modifying the OCR font for optically capturing correct dimensions and notes. When going from the SOLIDWORKS inspection add-on to the standalone software, all identified intelligent information is transferred to the inspection report, populating the project properties. Any changes needed are done at this stage. Additional dimensions, tables, and notes can be added to the inspection report. Using OCR, located in the Document tab under Dimension, a box can be placed around any text and then further defined in the Properties window. When a dimension is specified, SOLIDWORKS Inspection will identify the subtype, quantity, and full specification, including the nominal value and the upper and lower tolerances. When the type is changed to note, OCR will attempt to decipher the text. OCR uses two different font specifications and can be adjusted from going to Home, Options, and navigating to OCR under the Project Options. The upper font controls the definition for identifying dimensions. The lower font is for notes. The easiest way to define font is by looking at specific characters. I tend to default to the number 1. If it has a prominent foot at the base of the 1, I will use the standard font. If there is no foot or a slight foot, I'll default to NX1. Making this adjustment will typically get the desired recognition results. There is no need to recreate the balloon. The text can be redefined by drawing a box around it within the property tab and selecting the character Capture. And there we go. OCR has captured the text correctly after defining what style of font to use. Last in the trick list is adding the custom property from SOLIDWORKS so they show up in the final inspection report. To do this, go to File, Template Editor. Inspection comes with several predefined templates and choosing one to modify 
is a good starting point for developing your custom template. For this example, I'm going to pick the AS9102 M Expert. Typically, most property information is located on Form 1 and 2 of the report, and the pass fill dimensions are located on Form 3. Let's say I wanted to add my custom properties to Form 3. Using the template editor, any changes you would make in Microsoft Excel is possible. As the template editor uses Excel for this operation, it is critical that all changes are made using the template editor and not performed directly in Microsoft Excel, or the changes will not be recorded into the template. The template editor uses what are called tokens. Tokens tell the selected cell to pull certain data from the specified property in the inspection document. Anything added directly in inspection or pulled from SOLIDWORKS will be available to plug into the template. Once the tokens have been entered into the template, the template needs to be saved. Any new templates then need to be added to the Excel export template list. To do this, click on the green plus sign and select the new template. Hit the check mark export button and the full inspection report will be published out in a fully editable Excel format. Any added tokens will pull the linked data and add it to the inspection report. Of course, there is way too much detail to go over in such a short video, but using these three simple tricks will really help jumpstart the automation of inspection reports. Check out the description in this video for links for more detailed how-to procedures for template editing and software usage. This video is part two of a three-part video series covering pro tips for technical communications. If you enjoyed it, please check out video one and three covering SOLIDWORKS Composer assembly documentation and photorealistic renderings in SOLIDWORKS Visualize Professional.